As the start of a new movie universe is not the best start. Brothers and sisters, my name is Adarius, and welcome to the review of The Mummy without Brendan Fraser. So, The Mummy in this scenario is a lot different from The Mummy back in the late 90s. First of all, this time it is a female mummy, and that's not a bad thing. In fact, I would actually say that this mummy is at some times more frightening than Imhotep. But we get to that. So, the movie starts out that we get the backstory on the mummies, and we find out that this woman gets the mummy powers before she is killed. So it's not because of the burial ritual as it was with the Imhotep. All they do is they kill her, they mummify her and they put her in a grave along with a lot of mercury. Somehow that keeps evil spirits' powers in check. And that's the backstory. Now in present day we meet Tom Cruise and his buddy who are soldiers down in Iraq. And they are not some good people. Because early on you're told that usually it does deflect their mission to find some place of ancient buildings, temples or rituals or sanctuaries to raid and sell that off on the black market. And that you you don't really root for them on that part. Not because they are bad guys, but just the way they are presented. Well, they happen to fight some terrorists and end up finding this tomb where our mummy is buried. And they take it up and get it back to England. And on the way, the mummy is revived. Not by a book, it's just because of the lack of mercury. And now the mummy has been freed and Tom Cruise's character is somehow cursed and linked to this mummy and he needs to find a cure for the curse as well try to find a way to kill this mummy and this starts off our movie so what I like about this movie is it gets this terrifying mummy right first when the mummy is brought back to life it moves in a very creepy way like you would think a zombie or a cursed Ghoul or something would actually move, you know, kind of rocky and still fast. And I like that. And the way she gets subordinates is actually like Imhotep. She go over there and she sucks away all their flesh and life. And then she reanimates the corpse and now they work for her. And they are quite fragile, but they are tenacious as fuck. You can just keep hitting them and shooting them and cut them in half and they will still come for you. And I... It, it brought a horror element that I kind of missed from the old Mummy's movie. I also like the fact that the Mummy is portrayed to be a very terrifying being. Every time it's on camera, it's, it has lots of time because it knows you can't get away. So it just slowly walks toward you and summoning birds or sand and just throw it at you. And you can do nothing but run and just hope to fucking God that it won't find you. But guess what? It will. Also, some of the action works quite well, but there's not that much action to begin with. There is an action scene in the beginning where they are before they find the tomb. It's kind of funny, but it doesn't do much except show off the chemistry between Tom Cruise's character, Nick, and his best friend. And the comedy sometimes lands, but most of the time it doesn't. It just feels flat. And at no time you actually feel think or feel that they are in a dire situation, which is kind of a bummer. There is, however, two action sequences that I further really enjoyed. One is quite short, but it is Nick and another character arrive to this sanctuary and they get attacked by the mummy and she sent out these zombified people after them and the ferocity they attack with and just the fact that they try to get away but they can't. It it just builds up the tension perfectly, and you get the feeling this is a horror movie. It's not just an action flick. It's a horror movie. The other time is, well, 
I, I guess nowadays when you make a mummy movie, you have to make the mummy either use sand or water to make a great fucking wall and just put their face on it because they want to FaceTime you. But she makes a lot of sand out of glass and the two protagonists need to flee from it and it's terrifying as fuck because the sand is right behind them as they fleeing. And again, their mummy is just going... I will say that's the only two good action scenes you get. The other good scene is in the middle and I don't consider this a spoiler, but you meet up Dr. Jericho from Dr. Jericho and Mr. Hyde, played by Russell Crowe. And it's a nice tie into the universe they want to make. You can kind of see it as that scene being the same as Marvel's post credit scene with Nick Fury back in Iron Man 1. It's a gateway into what they want to build. We just need this movie to be profitable first, but well, but there is a lot of exposition there, but I didn't find it sloppy or boring, but actually kind of necessary for not just the story, but the beginning of the universe. It's just a little open doorway into what can you expect from this. Once that said, that is probably the only good things I can say about this movie. First of all, the mummy does almost nothing in this movie. She creates a little army of maybe five, ten guys and goes after Tom Cruise's uh, character. She then meets them in the sanctuary and then there's the thing with the sand and then there's the end and that's it. There's not, not a lot of show off of her incredible powers except that she can revive the dead and she can make sand. That's actually it. There's also the fact that not only Tom Cruise and the woman lead but also his best friends, their chemistry is not that convincing. Especially between Tom Cruise and his best friend. Now, they do bounce off each other quite well, but there's just a scene in, almost in the beginning of the movie where Tom Cruise has to do something to his friend and the payoff is a joke instead of some seriousness because that was this scene needs. It needs him to respond to what he has just done, but he doesn't. It's just a joke. And... A lot of times they actually try to force jokes at you even though they have set up this rather well-going horror flick. And it, it just bumps me out that I want so hard to be funny that they sacrifice the horror elements, especially since their universe is called Dark Universe. But you fill it with humor? What gives? Then it seems like they want to throw this movie as fast as possible together so they can start this universe instead of just trying to make this movie work alone. The movie felt rushed a lot of the times. Other times it felt like they just wanted this to be here to have a cool action sequence or have some jokes or just some exposition. There's not that much time for the characters to grow. Actually, it's only at the end that Nick's character or Tom Cruise's character actually grow. However, I will point out that Tom Cruise's character and the woman lead here, they don't quite go with, oh, it's, uh, will they, won't they? It's They have been intimate before this movie and it was just a one night stand, but they bounce off each other what you expect of this awkward, awkward relationship would be. And in the end, even though there are some emotional payoff, it's not to, for them to be together and I love you and all that bullshit. No, it's just that here is someone that I care about because I respect them and I have been through this hellhole with them and I just want that person to survive. Not because I have romantic feelings for them, but because, you know, I kind of consider them as my friend now. And I like that. That was a great change of pace. But when you look at all of it from above and see the whole picture, it just looks like a lot of the pieces are missing and some of the other pieces don't even fit. They are taken from other puzzles and it just smashed together and you kind of have a movie but it doesn't quite work and it's it just seems like they didn't know what kind of movie they want to make either they wanted to make an action movie or they wanted to make a horror movie they wanted to make a comedy but they can't decide and that ends up ruining the movie it's not bad though i did enjoy it but i just wish that i had to try to focus more on the dark horror part it's okay to throw in some humor now and then because that lightens the mood in the scenes that needs to be lightened. But on the other parts, it just take away the experience of it and it takes you out of the movie and you just sit there and just 
kind of wondering why would they do that. But with that said, with the gripes and the cons, I would say that the mummy you should just catch on Netflix. My experience. A new mummy movie. She looks kind of hot. Now I know this review is kind of short. I normally have an hour to record these, but now I have like 15 to 20 minutes to record it. So that's why I rushed through the review. But have you seen The Mummy? Or in fact, what do you think about this dark universe? Is it something you want to succeed? Or do you think it's just the same trope as Marvel and DC have already done? For, against, whatever you think, comment below and let me read your thoughts. And as always, and until I see you in the next video, remember to stay awesome. She's kind of hot though. Not when she is a corpse, but when she is fully grown, kind of hot and good for scenes.